Welcome to the webinar here today. My name is Joe Schmitz at Peak Retirement Planning. I'm the CEO and founder. And today we are going to be talking about Irma. Who is Aunt Irma? And we're also gonna be talking about Uncle Sam and how to pay the, less, the least amount of possible into Medicare that we possibly can the rest of our life. And also how do we pay the least amount of taxes over the rest of our lives too. So if you know anything about me, I wrote a book called I Hate Taxes. It was actually an Amazon bestseller. And so if, if you're like me and that's the case, today's gonna be a great webinar. If you wanna pay more in taxes, I would suggest you may wanna log off right now as you may not enjoy what we're gonna talk about because we're gonna be talking about ways to, in a legal way, in a smart way, how can we pay less to the government for what we've worked so hard to accumulate all of our life and so that's what's on the agenda here today so uh, you'll get a pretty good feel right now if it's gonna be good or bad for you here so uh, that's our goal and again you know the goal of this webinar is to be as educational as possible uh, it's gonna be about an hour here today so if you have further questions there is a Q&A there that I'm gonna go get to at the end of the, the webinar once I get through all the content I'm gonna answer as many of those questions as I can and if I'm not able to get through any of those then you'll have an opportunity to schedule a time with us uh, there's no cost to schedule this time I'll actually have someone on our team go ahead and pop that up now and you'll be able to click one of those times and meet with one of our advisors here uh, to just walk through your situation, see what further questions you have, see where you're at so we can tell you, hey, here's where you are, here's where uh, we would give you suggestions, or maybe, hey, everything looks good. And uh, if you are looking for further guidance, and that's an area where we could see if we can help you, and you could also see you know, what it could look like to work with us too. And if at the end of that session, we think it could make sense and we could schedule another time to really explore deeper and, and uh, you know, talk more of what that would be. So we do know a lot of these people attending this webinar take advantage of that opportunity, and they are looking for further help so that's why we offer it and uh, you know we'd be certainly glad to see if we can help in any way so uh, with that being said let's make this super fruitful and get as much out of it as we can so to start us off let's start talking about these five pillars so if you've, you've heard any of my other webinars if you heard me on TV if you've heard me if you've read the book if you've been to our website if you've read any Kipling articles that I've written you'll see that we really emphasize comprehensive retirement planning and so what this means is that we're looking at all five of these areas now when we think of Irma and taxes well Irma is going to fall under the healthcare planning pillar right because you have to pay for Part B and Part D of Medicare what we don't understand is that that can really play a part not only in healthcare planning but also in tax planning because the higher your income is right also plays a part of income planning the higher your income is the more tax you have to pay the more healthcare premiums you have to pay for Medicare, and that could mean less to your estate, less to your beneficiaries when you pass. And so we wanna make sure that's why we have a plan of how all these work together. Uh, and, and IRMA and tax planning is really the foundation for all of this. We've gotta make sure we keep our income lower and retirement is ultimately our goal here. So our advice at the end of this work, webinar today is just make sure you've got a comprehensive plan, making sure you're able to check mark each of these items here. And so if I asked you on a scale of one to 10, you know, where do you feel you are with each of these? Do you have a tax plan? Do you have all your estate planning documents in place? Do you know the impacts of IRMA and how that's gonna um, be you know, based on your income and what that's projected to be? So again, have a comprehensive plan is ultimately the goal of today. So let's start off by talking about what is IRMA? Who is Aunt IRMA? And so IRMA stands obviously, as you can see on the screen, income related monthly adjustment amount as I refer to as Medicare premiums. And so with, Medi with IRMA, there's a couple of things we have to be aware of. The first thing is that many people are not talking about this. And so we actually do a lot of webinars on IRMA and we get people all across the country just like today to come hear this because they wanna know more because no one's talking about it. And what we see is most financial planners don't even factor IRMA into the conversation. They just do investment management. They're not focused on what is the impacts to your income and taxes and, and healthcare. And so that's something we really wanna bring light to today so that you're not 
you're not surprised when Irma comes around. And so we've got many stories of people who come and see us for the first time or being like, I had to pay extra for Medicare this year and I don't know why. Well, we're gonna talk about why that's the case and how to prevent that. And so what we really need to understand is the impact of inflation when it comes to Irma. And so when you think of Medicare premiums, you have to think of what has the cost been over time? Has the cost of Medicare premiums risen over time or has it gone down or stayed the same? And obviously, as we all know, Medicare premiums have skyrocketed lately and have been up around 7% per year average. Now, if you look at this chart here, you're going to see that Medicare Part B has increased at 7.39%. Inflation has only been 3.27%. So inflation has risen much more with Medicare than it has with on everything else. And you all are gonna to get to be getting a social security check. And your social security checks cost of living adjustment is even less than inflation. And if you ask me, I'd probably expect it to be even lower than that moving forward considering social security is on, you know, basically the, uh, you know, basically could collapse at any point is, is what you always hear, right? You know, I don't personally think it's going to run away or go away, um, but we do have to understand that it is in trouble and it's probably not, you know, something's going to have to sacrifice there with Social Security. I don't think they're going to go away with it, but there may have to be some reductions or less inflation uh, adjustment as you're, you're seeing, you know, on your screen right now. And so basically what I'm trying to make the point of is that if we're seeing such high Medicare premium costs increasing and we're expecting a 6% rise moving forward, what do you think is going to happen to your Medicare costs? of course they're gonna go up. And just like Social Security, Medicare's in trouble too. We have 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every single day. That's happened for the last 10 years, and it's gonna happen for 10 more. And so with that influx into the system, you have to think of simple economics, supply and demand. We have too much demand for something that we don't have enough people to take care of them. What is gonna to happen to cost in that situation? Cost is going to have to rise is obviously how that game works. And so if that's the case, how does this all play together? Well, remember that Social Security and Medicare play together. When you go and pay your Medicare Part B premium, it comes out of your Social Security benefit. And so what we're projecting moving forward is that you may not get a Social Security check moving forward if these are the numbers that we're gonna be expecting to see. And what we wanna make sure is that you can get more of that Social Security. We don't wanna see you have to pay really high Medicare costs, cause Irma to be two or three times more. And so we need to plan now to find ways to lower our income so that we're not faced with these higher amounts moving forward. And so you've worked hard the last 30, 40 years to accumulate that Social Security check, you've paid into it. Let's make sure you can have that as a part of your plan and have that money to spend versus paying it right back to the government and seeing no benefit of all those years you've worked. So here's what I'm talking about with everything I just rambled on about is here's what we could see moving forward. And so if your social security check is about $3,000 right now, well, with a 2.4% inflation, that's gonna be the rise of it over time. As you see, it goes up, but it's not going to outpace the Medicare inflation rate over time. And so the Medicare cost right now, you know, it may only be this amount here, but over time, look how much it could go up over a 30 year period of time. And at this point, you could be paying more into Medicare than you are getting from Social Security, which means that the Medicare, you know, the government will send you a bill each month to pay for your Medicare. Don't think they'll go without saying, ah, oh, your Social Security is enough, no problem, you don't have to pay it. No, they're gonna send you a bill to say you have to pay it. Just like if you don't turn on Social Security, let's say you're waiting until Social Security, but you still have to pay for Medicare Part B and D at, at, at 65, they're gonna make sure you pay that out of pocket. And so once you take Social Security, they don't just come right out of it. So again, huge concern that we have to see. And so let's talk further about why, why this is an issue and how we can plan for this. So the first thing we need to understand is that we need to lower our income throughout retirement. And so let's think about required minimum distribution. So with a required minimum distribution at age 73, or 75, depending on when you're born. If you're born at, at 1960 or after, your RMD is now 75, anyone else it's 73. And this is the age where the government forces you to take out money. Now I always joke, is it a good thing when the government forces you to do something? And the answer is, of course not, it never is. And so what we wanna see here is lowering RMDs is what our goal is because if we have a, maybe a pension, social security, 
and this RMD, you're going to cause your income to be higher, which is going to force Medicare premiums to be at a higher cost there. And so that's something that we want to make sure we're planning for. And so what does this RMD look like moving forward? Well, that's what we're seeing on our chart here. So I just did a simple calculation. This is something that we do for all of our clients every year to track what their RMDs are going to be expected to be moving forward. And so we're just taking, you know, an average person, a million dollars, and we're going to show if they get a 6% return over time and they don't touch the money, they don't add to it, what would their RMD be at once they turn 75 for their case? Well, they're going to get that $60,000 growth in year one, obviously, 6% return, and then that's going to keep compounding and growing and growing and growing and growing. So you may think, I only have a million dollars right now. It's not going to be a big impact to RMDs. Well, that's what you have now, but what happens as it compounds? And now by the time you get to 75, you could have over $2 million. Your money doubled over that period of time, which means your RMD at this point could be $92,000. So when you get to 75, you're going to be required to take out about 4% of that amount, which in this scenario comes out to 92,000. So you have to ask yourself, what is 92,000 plus Social Security plus maybe a pension going to do to your income? You ever heard the saying of, you'll be in a lower tax bracket in retirement? And for the clients that we work with, those who have been diligent savers, like someone on the screen here, you're not going to be in a lower tax bracket is what I would expect. And the reason why is because of these RMDs, because of all this money you saved that you have not paid taxes on yet. And so with that being the case, your income is either going to be about the same or higher due to this. And something that really concerns me is not only when you turn RMD age, but as it keeps going. And as you can see on the chart here, by the time they're 80, now their RMD is 120,000. And if they live till 90, their RMD could be $187,000 probably well more, you know, way more than what they made while they're working when you add Social Security to the mix. And so you can see here, this can lead to what we call a retirement tax time bomb is the key word we always use there. And so ultimately the idea is we've got to find ways to reduce these RMDs. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. But we're also going to talk about the impacts if we don't do anything of what that can mean for IRMA and other consequences that you may have to see. You may have to pay full tax on your social security. You may force your tax brackets into higher places. And so that's what we need to plan for. And so if you just look at here, if your RMD is 92,000, let's just say that you get an, a uh, social security check of you know $3,000 per spouse. Well, there's $6,000 a month, right? 6,000 times 12 is uh, what, 72,000. Uh, well, that's that's almost $160,000, just over 160, about $165,000 of income. You know, little, not all of that will be taxable. Social Security, only about 85% of that will be taxable. So you're still looking at close to $150,000 of income that is going to be taxable at federal income rates. And everyone told you that you would be in a lower tax bracket in retirement. I'm not sure if that's the case anymore from what we're seeing. And so that's what we have to be prepared of. So if this is what the case is, what does this look like for from an IRMA standpoint? So right here is just the Medicare Part B premiums based on your modified adjusted gross income. And so if you look here for uh, if your income is if you're married filing jointly and your income is $206,000 or less, then you have to pay the lowest cost, which is $175. So that is what most people have to pay. Now, if you're a high income earner, which again, you may not be a high income earner in retirement because you're no longer working, but you could be considered still high income from what I just showed you from your R&D, from your Social Security, maybe a pension, all of those things playing together. And if you have a pension, just understand that all this planning is even more important to you because you're already starting higher up from that guaranteed income every year. And so we've got two videos on our YouTube channel. They're actually two of our more popular videos that we have there that you can actually go and watch if you have a pension to understand the importance of tax planning and what we're talking about here of why it is so significant for you to get going. But even if you don't have a pension, if you have a higher investment amount, million dollars or more especially, then this is stuff you're really going to want to pay attention to as I just showed you with that RMD chart. Let me move back to the RMD chart before I get into this. This is just showing if you have a million dollars. What if you have two million? What if you have five million? What if you have $10 million? What's the impact of this gonna be? By the time you're 73 or 75, you could be in the highest Medicare premium tier that I'm showing here, 
or close to it and paying double or triple the amount in Medicare costs and getting much less from your Social Security. And remember too, that this is only per individual. So if you're married, multiply it by two. And so if you're married 175, you're both paying $175 a month. And that's gonna be ongoing. Plus that could rise at six, 7% is what we're expecting. And so you can see this is gonna be a high cost moving forward. And so as you know, see on this chart, if you're married filing jointly, if you're over 206,000, then you start to have to see an increase here in the amount you're paying for Medicare. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Joe, I get the same amount of healthcare coverage, but I have to pay more than the person down the street. Yeah, the person down the street who didn't work hard, who didn't save, who didn't do what they're supposed to, yes, they, they, the government is gonna help them out by giving them a lower cost for healthcare throughout their retirement. But you, the millionaire next door is what we call it, most of the people who we, we work with, is the person who's been diligent, the person who's saved, the person who's been frugal, who has sacrificed. Sorry, because you've done so, you're gonna to have to pay more in Medicare premiums is what the government's telling us. If we don't plan, that is. If we do plan and do the things that I'm talking about today, well, now we can put ourselves in a better position to pay less in Medicare premiums throughout our retirement. And so that's how this works here. So I wanna make sure that's clear that the higher income, the more you pay, but you don't get better coverage, it's the same coverage. And if you're single, you'll see that over here as well. And we're also gonna talk about something on this webinar called uh, the widow's penalty. And so you can see on this chart here what the widow's penalty and how severe that is. And so if you're married filing jointly, there's three things that are gonna happen when you pass away if you're married. One is your, your tax brackets are gonna go from married filing jointly to single. That's one, one difference. The second difference is that you're gonna lose one of the social security checks. So you could see a big drop off in income. The higher of the two social security checks will stay, but one will go away. The third impact is Medicare premiums. Now your tiers get cut in half. You may have a little less income from social security, but you still have the same investments. You still have maybe the same pension and you still have that one social security, which means that you're gonna be paying more for Medicare premiums at a sooner point than if you're married. And so again, if your plan is to make sure your spouse is taken care of, Planning now is, is gonna be inevitable to make sure that you're, you're not paying more in Medicare premiums, especially for those with, who have been a diligent saver, obviously. So that's the idea there. And the other thing I really wanna point out on this chart is you see up here, it says if your yearly income in 2022 was, and then you pay each month in 2024. And so what that means is that this looks back two years. So if you're 65 today, you're gonna get a bill that says you have to pay X amount for Medicare this month, this year. Now, if your income at 63 was really high because you sold a business or you did something, you're gonna be having to pay more money in Medicare for that year. And then let's say that you just sold a business and then the next year you had no income. Well, that following year, now you're back at the lower tier. So it's only a one year increase based on what your income was two years ago. Now, let's say that you uh, retired at 65, your age, your income at 65 was lower, but at 64 and 63 it was higher because you were working and making a ton of money. Well, not only will your 65 premium be higher, but so will your 66, because again, it goes back to 64, but then when you're 67, potentially it could be lower if you had a lower income at 65. So again, they make it confusing, uh, but just make sure you're aware of that because we had a guy come see us and he said, Joe, I had to pay all this money for Medicare pre premiums this year and I don't know why. And we just started working with him, so we didn't know what that would look like. And so we're like, well, show us your tax return from two years prior. And he showed us his tax return and of course, he sold his business, which meant that he had to pay more for Medicare premiums for that year. The good news is it was only for one year. The bad news is, you know, he, we could have prevented that. And you can submit a one-time, uh, basically right of refusal to not have to uh, pay Medicare premiums for that particular year based on one-off events, um, you know, based on if you're working, making a high income, if you sell a business, you sell a property. And so there's a whole list of things. And there's pretty good feedback on what we receive from seeing actual forgiveness there to not have to pay higher premiums for that one year based on one-off events. And so make sure you get that form, make sure you follow through on that if that's gonna be an opportunity for you. Now, doing Roth conversions and things like that, that's not gonna be an exception that they'll allow for, unfortunately. We wish they did, uh, but unfortunately, uh, that's not gonna be something that is gonna be 
uh, allowed there. So anyway, so that's the case there. So just make sure you're aware of this when you do your planning. Uh, we're gonna talk about Roth conversions later on in the webinar. Uh, and just remember this point here as you're taking notes uh, because we're gonna come back to it. And so I've already said this three or four times, but how do we plan for this? We have to lower our income throughout retirement. And so how do we lower our income? It's by reducing our RMD amount and by making sure less of our Social Security is taxable. Now, we get the question a lot, is Social Security taxable nowadays? It used to not be, but for more people nowadays, it is. If your income is high, you're gonna have to pay more in Social Security tax. If your income is low, you may not have to pay any tax on that Social Security check that you receive, and the majority of that money is in your pocket and less is going to taxes. And so we're gonna show you, believe it or not, how to get your Social Security benefit tax-free. And now I always you know, joke with the crowd and say, is anyone okay with that? Is anyone okay showing, um, for me showing you how to get your Social Security tax-free? And uh, obviously everyone is thrilled to death to, to hear how that is. So that's the good news for you for attending a day. You're going to be able to learn how to do that. Now, let me kind of pivot here and just make a quick comment. Now, if you want to pay more in taxes, I mentioned this at the beginning of the webinar. I just want to mention it again. You're probably not the right place for you here today. And I just want to make it clear, though, that I've never met anyone who gives donations to the IRS be above and beyond their taxes. They always want to pay less and they always hate taxes, right? And that's why I wrote the book called I Hate Taxes, so we can pay less over our retirement and get this guy out of our pockets, right? Because you've worked hard for that money. You've worked hard for 30, 40 years. You've sacrificed, you've been diligent, and you want to make sure you're maximizing what you've worked hard for. You know, we had a, I had a guy come up to me one time. I'll, I'll never forget. It was, it was one of those, it was, it was early in my career, career, and he came up to me and said, Joe, you know, I know, I know your firm. I know you're managing you know, lots of assets. I know you're lot, managing a lot of people, and I'm working with a firm right now, and, and I'm just a small person you know, for, for that firm. But he said, I don't care about any of that stuff because this is all I have and this is what I've worked hard for. And they, you, you know, you may have more, they may have more, but this is all I've got. And so, you know, if you mess it up for me, it's not as big of a deal for you, but for me, you know, for him, it's everything. And so I just want to make that clear is that he is absolutely right. And so when you work with someone, you need to be working with a team that you fully trust, someone who's going to be diligent for you and someone who is going to make sure that they're going to do everything they can to make it the best situation possible for what you're paying them to do. Because this stuff is serious. This is your life savings. This is not something to, to mess around about. And because when you make one or two mistakes in retirement, it's going to be costly. And so you want to make sure that you're reducing mistakes and trying to maximize moving forward. And that's why that five pillar approach really comes into play. It helps make sure we don't miss anything. You know, we get a lot of people that come to us and say, hey, look, I've been doing this on my own, but I want to just delegate it at this point because I don't want to miss anything and I don't mind paying for something knowing I'm going to get the value back and free up my time and to make sure my spouse is taken care of if something happens. So again, just encourage, make sure you get help uh, so you're not making mistakes here, but get it from the people who you truly trust, who is doing comprehensive planning, not from someone who is just doing investment management would be my advice. So hopefully that, that's helpful for you. We've written articles in Kiplinger. Uh, we've actually created a guide that if you have an advisor, uh, we have like a checklist that you can grade them and see how are they doing? Are they doing the right things? Are they missing things? And so if you'd like that, just reach out to us or go to Kiplinger. You can see all the articles I write. I get featured there every month. And so uh, there's a bunch of articles there that may be helpful for you. And we also have one that if you're looking for an advisor of what should you look for. And so if that's going to be helpful for you, reach out to us. We'll be sure to, to give you some guidance there. All right. And then also understand too, that you can schedule a time with us if you want to talk further about this stuff, or, you know, you, you want to talk further with our firm about working with us or just get our, our guidance there. Um, feel free to do so. I'll actually have the, the team go ahead and uh, put that scheduling link on the, on the screen here for you to do so. So, um, so as you can see on the quote, I'm sure you've already read it, that the best way to mitigate IRMA and taxes is to plan ahead and make smart decisions about your retirement income. That's what I've been saying all along. That's what our goal is, and that's what we're about to talk about now is how can we be more tax smart, more smart about controlling our income and owning our retirement is what I like to say. So the good old blueberry story. So if you've heard any of my workshops, you've heard any of my webinars, you know the good old blueberry story. And I love this story, and it's very applicable right now today. And so the story goes, 
that my mom loves blueberries. And when she goes to the store and blueberries are on sale, she stocks up. And so whenever I'm at her house after a blueberry sale, the entire freezer is full of blueberries. And I ask her, mom, why do you need 50 pints of blueberries right now? And she goes, because they're on sale and I don't wanna to go to the store next week and pay double or triple the price for something that I know I'm gonna put in my smoothies every single morning. And so if that's the case, go have at it. And I'm sure a lot of you and a lot of us are very much like my mom and that we wanna make sure that we are valuing what we've, what we've worked hard for and making sure we pay the least amount of possible and, and save the money that we can. And so here's my point with this story. Right now today, do you think tax rates will go up or down moving forward. Most people expect tax rates to go up. Why do they expect tax rates to go up? Well, number one, tax rates are among the lowest that we've seen in history. Not the very lowest, but among the lowest that we've seen. And most people expect tax rates to go up because of our current debt crisis. Our country is well over $30 trillion in debt. And so what happens to uh, if we want to cover up that debt crisis? Well, one is we can reduce spending. A lot of people don't think that's gonna happen. And the second way is we can raise taxes. Now, we don't just have to raise federal taxes, but we could you know, uh, have the estate tax limit come down. We could force Social Security to be fully taxable instead of 85%. We could make capital gains not have a 0% bracket and be at 15%. We could have inflation, which in my mind is a hidden tax. So they can make a ton of changes that put us at a disadvantage to get more revenue from us in order to cover some of that debt crisis. And so that's what most people expect is tax rates are going up. And so here's my point back to the story. If you think tax rates are going up, that means taxes are on sale right now. And that means we have to plan now and pay our taxes now before later. And what I'm re referencing right now is your tax deferred investments, that retirement tax time bomb, those investments that take the RMD from those that we went through earlier. If you have that investment, you're going to have to pay taxes when you take that money out. Would you rather take that money out now at today's rates or later at future rates that could be higher than what they are now? And so the good news about this is, is you have the choice to do what you want to do. And it's going to require you to take action if you do want to. If you don't want to, just keep sitting still and, and just wait for the tax rates to rise if that's what you think is going to happen. If you think tax rates will be lower or stay the same, hey, maybe there's not as much urgency here for you, but most people we talk to, most of the experts that we talk to expect tax rates to rise. And so with that being said, how do we plan for this? And how do we plan for this knowing that tax rates are gonna rise as soon as 2026 when the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act expires? So I'm sure all of you have been familiar with this. I'm sure all of you have been planning for this. I'm sure if you have an advisor, they've been putting together plans over the last five years since 2017, really about the last, um, you know, more than five years, I guess, at this point, and, and ensuring that you're paying the lowest amount possible in taxes on your hard-earned savings is what the goal is with this concept. And so in two short years, 2026, we've got two more tax years to take advantage of. Tax rates are gonna go up. And for most Americans, they'll go up about 20% and you'll be paying about 20% more in taxes. And that's just in 2026. We don't know what tax rates will be beyond 2026, but most people expect them to be higher. And so that's why we wanna play now. It's ultimately the idea. So let's talk through this uh, concept a little further. But before we do that, here's just a fun little chart that it's always just fun to look at. Um, but we always joke around like, when's the, what's the highest tax bracket of all time? Well, it's actually been 94% after World War II. And if you look at it now, the highest tax bracket is only 37%. And so ultimately, the question is, is, are tax rates on sale right now? They are much lower than what they've been in the past. In 1981, the highest bracket was 70%. And so the question becomes of what are tax rates going to do moving forward? And so we always want to think about this tax deferred investment, which I've already talked about. These are those 401ks, those IRAs, maybe a 403b, maybe a TSP if you're a federal employee, maybe a Ohio deferred comp if you're here in Ohio or you know deferred comp if you're in a different uh, state. I know we've got people all around the country on this call. Uh, so these are the retirement accounts that you've saved into that you have not paid taxes on yet. And so when you put your $10,000 in up front, no tax. You get a tax savings and you're happy when that happens. But when this 10,000 grows to 100,000 and you take out that 100,000, now you have to pay tax on all that 100,000 and it counts as income. So it counts just like you were working uh, is the idea. 
And so with this tax deferred investment, you have to understand that you've got a partner on this investment with you. And your partner is gonna take whatever percentage share that he wants to. And so I asked the question, do you get to decide tax rates or does the government decide tax rates? And of course the government decides tax rates and do you think they're gonna make tax rates higher or lower for you when you take out of these accounts? If you have a million dollars in this account, how much are you gonna truly have when, at the end of time? after all of your tax rates come out. Because remember, the deal you made with Uncle Sam up front is you said, I'm not gonna pay you now, but I'll pay you later. And so that's what we have to think about with this tax deferred investment here. Now, a lot of you probably think, well, Joe, you're making this sound like the worst thing in the world and I've got a lot of money there. Well, I'm not telling you it's the worst thing in the world. I'm just telling you to start planning. Because if you start planning now, it could actually be a really good vehicle that you have used. Because remember, Back when you were working, tax rates were probably higher than what we're seeing right now during this tax sale. And so if you made the right decision of putting money here back here, you deferred at a higher rate so that you could pay it at a lower rate today. The, 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 the thought there though is you've got to start paying it today because if we don't pay it today, well then you're going to have to pay it later, which again, we just discussed is probably going to be higher than what it is now. So pretty simple concept, but we just have to act. We have to do something about it. So what can we do about it? So let's talk about an alternative of not having our money in tax deferred, but instead having our money in tax free. Now there's a lot of different tax free vehicles out there, but we're specifically gonna talk about Roth IRAs here today. With a Roth IRA, when you put $10,000 in, you have to pay your taxes today. But when your 10,000 grows to 100,000 and you take out 100,000, you don't pay any tax at all. That 100,000 doesn't even, the IRS doesn't even see it on your tax return and you're able to live on hundred thousand dollars but the government says he has no money they have no income and that's how you legally get the irs out of the picture and allows you to for medicare premiums to be lower allows your social security tax to be lower allows your capital gains tax to be lower and allows you to pay less or no tax throughout your retirement if we can get more tax-free income and show the irs that we have no income but we're still enjoying what, we, what, we're, what we've um, planned for because we've just done it in a different way in a more smart way at the end of the day. And so how do we do this then? How do we get more money from tax deferred over to tax free? Well, there's a strategy out there called a Roth conversion. And before I get into that strategy, I wanna emphasize that the majority of people have their money in tax deferred and there's, only, there's nearly $40 trillion in tax deferred and there's less than one trillion in tax free. And I always ask, why is that the case? And there's been many reasons why, but with this Roth conversion idea I'm about to tell you, you can start to transfer money over from the tax deferred to the tax free. The majority of people can do this. And what we see is that most people should be doing this right now, especially if you've saved and been a diligent saver, let's say you have a million dollars or more, this is gonna be a really fruitful strategy for you to look at. Now it's not for everyone, but I can tell you the majority of our clients right now are doing some sort of Roth conversion. And so if you are not doing a Roth conversion, I would highly encourage you to write that down, circle it, highlight it, because this could be a really good strategy that you could start to implement right now to help you lower your lifetime tax bill, lower your Medicare premiums, lower your Social Security tax, and pay less to Uncle Sam and keep more in your pocket. And again, we get a lot of people that come to us and say, I just wanna make sure I'm not paying more in taxes than what I should. I just want to pay my fair share. I don't want to tip Uncle Sam. And so if that's you, these are the types of strategies you're going to want to look to implement to get ahead. Okay. We all have these opportunities. We can all plan now. It's for you to decide if you should do this. And if you should, how much should you convert? Because we get the question a lot. Should I just convert everything? Well, maybe not. We had a guy, $3 million, come see us. And he said, I want to convert everything. That was an awesome webinar. You guys crushed it. I love Roth. How do I do this? And we said, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have to pay $1.5 million in tax if you do this today. Let's not do that. Uh, let's look to do this over a certain amount of period of time. And so when we do these Roth conversions, we wanna make sure that we're not converting too much. We also wanna make sure we're not converting too little. Because if we convert too much, we may be paying a higher tax rate than we may ever see. And if we convert too little, well, maybe we're leaving money on the table at tax rates that we may not see again. And so that's why we need a specific calculation a specific report, a specific analysis from someone who knows what they're doing, an expert, to make sure we're in the right place. So we do this for our clients every year, 
to decide what we should be looking at doing here. And if your advisor is not doing that for you, or maybe you're doing it on your own and you're not even looking at this side of things, then I would recommend you get help. If you find that we can be valuable in that and you're looking for more guidance and, and you're looking for someone to help you ongoing, then that probably means that you know, it would make sense for you to get on our, our calendar, which will have someone on our team share there, and you can meet with one of our advisors. We'll walk you through the process and see what value you have there and how you can improve your, your situation. And so that's the idea of Roth conversion. You know, I'm from Carroll, Ohio. I know there's some people from out of, out of state here, and I'm sure there's even people in Ohio that don't know where Carroll is. It's a very rural air community, uh, just southeast of Columbus there. And uh, there's, there's a lot of farmland, and my buddy down there is a farmer. And it's a blink and you miss it town. There's one traffic light, sometimes it works. And I asked him, would you rather pay tax on the seed that you plant or the harvest that you reap? And of course he says, the seed. It's much less. I don't want to wait in the future and pay it on more. I want to pay it on less. This is the same concept with the Roth conversion. Do you want to pay the tax on that hard-earned life savings today at a lower amount or later at a higher amount? Now at a lower tax rate or later at a higher tax rate? So hopefully that one can help you remember how that works. I had a mentor uh, when I got into the industry and she's still one of my best friends today and she has been a huge impact in myself and, and my firm is, uh, you know, and she's always told me, keep everything at a fourth grade level. She's been a retired financial planner. She was in the business for 40 years. And she, that, was the, that was the piece of advice that um, was, was stuck with me is keep everything at a fourth grade level because you know financial planning is complex, especially retirement planning. And so how can we make it simple? And so here's a fun one to make sure it's simple for you so you can remember the importance and value of doing a Roth conversion. All right, so let's move on then to the widow's penalty. I talked about this earlier, but I just want to emphasize it here again. And I, you, again, this is another story I tell all the time because I think it's very powerful, just like my blueberry story. And I'm going to stick it in the family again. I'm going to keep, stay in the family. I'm not going to leave the family, just like I shared about my mom. Now I'm going to share about my, my uncle. And so my uncle here, as you can see in the picture, uh, this is at a client appreciation event, and the guy shows up in overalls. Is that acceptable? Well, I'm about to tell you that it is absolutely acceptable because this guy was a first client when I got into the industry and Uncle Chuck does whatever Uncle Chuck does because of that, because it's people like him who trusted me early on of why we've been able to impact so many people, why we've been able to build this firm and help as many people as we can. And so uh, I don't care what Uncle Chuck wears to that um, client appreciation event is, is the idea. So the reason why I'm sharing Uncle Chuck here is because this, is, this picture was taken six months before he passed away, and so I'm gonna share with you some of the impacts that he was going to face if we did not plan the right way. And so as I shared earlier, there's three things that happen when one spouse passes away. Your tax brackets go from married filing jointly to single, which means you could pay nearly double the amount of taxes from that. There's actually four things. The second thing is your standard deduction gets cut in half. The amount of tax-free money up front gets cut. So instead of it being about 30,000, it's about $15,000 of tax-free money up front. So anything in income in a standard deduction, you don't pay any taxes. So if your income is 30,000, you're married, you don't have to pay any taxes because you get that amount tax-free. And so every taxpayer has that uh, opportunity. And so the third thing is the social security. One of the social security is gonna go away, which means that that widow is gonna be left with less social security and that's why another reason why the widow's penalty is so severe and the fourth reason is the medicare premium remember how it goes from 200 to 100 thousand dollars and so we need to make sure that we're not forcing our income higher at that point when they have to pay higher tax brackets they have less of a standard deduction more of their social security is going to be taxable and also their medicare are going to be higher too as well and so that's the idea of the widow's penalty and so we need to make sure we're planning for this the good thing with my uncle is we were able to plan ahead of this uh, and so my aunt is in a great spot from a tax planning standpoint moving forward because we were able to get our work done now you know before the uh, or not now but you know we were able to get it done at married filing jointly rates first taxes so some of the are single so some of these Roth conversion idea things like that we were able to do it at the more generous rates first at the less generous and so now when they're taking out money when she's taking out money in retirement it's more tax-free which shows her income lower which is important to do knowing she's at a disadvantage and so here's just a little quick um, story just to, to show the, the numbers of that story you know so you have Social Security you have the RMD the total tax is about eleven thousand dollars on this story here when they're married but when they're single, remember Social Security goes away, the incomes, the investments stay about the same, 
the higher of the two social security stays as you can see so you'll see that the widow has less income but the question is is do they have to pay more in taxes and as i just explained they will have to pay more in taxes and it will be a significant more in tax and also you have to understand that what goes in that total tax is that they are paying more in irma uh, premiums under this situation as well and so because of that you know we need to make sure we've got a better plan to to plan for this we don't want to see a twenty four thousand dollar loss of income and a six thousand dollar more of a tax bill that's a thirty thousand dollar penalty that the the widow has to live without um, and so we need to make sure we're reducing that so I talked about Social Security earlier. Let me get a drink of water here. So with Social Security, this is gonna be based on uh, your income of if it's taxable or not. So we're gonna walk through at this point to show you how to get your Social Security tax-free. And I joked about this earlier, but this is very reasonable and, and can work for a lot of people. So a lot of our clients, they don't have to pay any tax on their Social Security benefit because we're able to plan ahead and take tax-free income out to lower their income. And so what ultimately this does is allows us to drive Medicare premiums at the lowest cost is the goal. So with Social Security tax, the way it works, I'm gonna use some, some hand movements here. If your income is lower, then your, sorry, your provisional income, if it's low enough and it's under a certain amount, you'll pay no taxes on Social Security. As soon as your income starts to increase and it hits this and then it starts to go up, then you're gonna to start to having to pay more tax on the Social Security amount. So if you're getting $100,000 a year from Social Security, let's say joint couple, I know that's a high amount, but just for easy numbers, well, as soon as your income starts to increase, maybe your 10% your, your, your of your Social Security is taxable. So maybe only 10,000 counts as income at that point, but then it goes to 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. It goes all the way up to 85% of that Social Security could count as income. So if you have $100,000, $85,000 of that could be counted as income on top of your investment withdrawals, on top of your pension. And so all of those things are going to force your Medicare premiums to be higher. And so that's what we're trying to avoid is our Social Security to be fully taxable. We need to make sure that we can try to get this less taxable or ideally, if we can, have it be tax-free. And so how do we do that? Let's talk you through an example, a real life client example of what we did. But first, let me kind of show you the impacts here of what I'm talking about. So for example, this just shows a low income versus a high income. So someone making an average of $40,000 a year for 30 years, they only pay $153,000 on IRMA and, and uh, on, on, um, on, on tax because they don't have their social security may not even be subject to income tax. So they could have Social Security tax-free, they could have no IRMA penalties, all they're paying is that federal tax bracket of a very small amount because remember, standard deduction as well there too. And so not a, not a ton of tax over their 30-year lifetime. And so someone who has $160,000 a year for 30 years, they could pay five times as much, $614,000, or I guess four, four times as much, because now they're subject to IRMA and now they're forcing Social Security to be 85% taxable as I just explained. So again, what's the name of the game? Lower your income is ultimately our goal here. And so what does this look like in real life? Well, let me give you a real life example here of two characters. So we've got Bill and Bill and his, his wife there, they took Social Security at the earliest age possible, age 62. And now this is not a recommendation on when to take Social Security because that truly depends on when the best time is. And so we don't know the answer, but this is the impact to show you of if we take it at a certain point, what's gonna be the impact to our tax situation. So again, not a recommendation. We tell people to take it 62, we tell them to take it at 70, we tell them to take it in between. It's gonna depend on your goals. And so if we take Social Security at 62, we get a smaller amount, which means that we're gonna take out more from our investments. And now if we didn't do any planning, and we didn't listen to this webinar, and we haven't been paying attention in the past, and we haven't done anything to tax-free or to a Roth or anything like that, we're gonna be forced to take our money out from our IRA, and we're gonna be forced to pay a tax rate that we do not know what's gonna be because we don't know what the government will make tax rates because it's written in pencil. And because of that, we're gonna to need to pay about $9,000 in taxes. So in this scenario, they were able to receive $100,000 of income, and they still had to pay $8,800 in taxes. So imagine that, 
you're retired, but you're still having to pay almost $9,000 in taxes. No longer working, but you're still it's writing a check to Uncle Sam for $9,000. That's, that's a lot of money. So is there a better way? And so here's the idea if we plan the right way of what the future could look like. And so we're going to show you Jill here. And Jill and her husband, they plan a little bit different. They just did two things differently. They had the same exact situation, just two things differently. One is they took Social Security at 70 instead of 62. So in doing so, they were able to increase their Social Security amount and they were not having to take out as much income in retirement once age 70 hit. So they did have to take out more money from their investments from 62 to 70 to bridge that gap, but for them, they had enough money to do so. And so when they did get to 70, most of their income came from Social Security, very little from investments, which were allowed them to be able to reduce their Social Security tax. And then they also had a more of a balance between the Roth and the traditional. So remember how most people have all their money in tax deferred? Well, they were able to be tax smart and plan it ahead and be proactive like we've been talking about today. And they were able to have more of a balance between tax free and tax deferred. So now they had control out of which bucket they pull out from. And so for Jill's example here, what she was able to do is take a split from the Roth and the IRA. Majority of income comes from Social Security. And my question for you is what tax bracket, what tax bill is Jill and her husband gonna have to pay at this point? And shocking enough, Jill and her husband are living a 0% tax bracket retirement. They're not having to pay any federal income tax to the IRS. And so the reason for this is when you take out money from a Roth, that does not count as tax. That does not count as income, which is not taxed. If all we're taking out that is tax is our IRA, and if we're taking out a little bit and not a lot, well, that could allow us to force our Social Security to be tax free. Remember that when I did my hand mo movements? Well, in this scenario, we were able to keep her provisional income here, which meant Social Security was tax free. And if you remember the standard deduction I talked about earlier, if we can keep our IRA under that standard deduction, we don't have to pay any tax on that IRA. And so if you plan the right way and you're tax smart, this type of stuff is very reasonable and it's a, and it's a, it's a way that you can reduce your tax burden on, over your lifetime by paying taxes now on some of this money by converting it to a Roth and, and doing smart planning like that so that you can be in a better place in the future when it matters the most. What do I mean it matters the most? Well, it matters the most because not only do tax rates, you know, do we suggest they're going up over time, but also you may not have to worry about Social Security or Medicare at this point. And so you can do some of these things now, knowing that in the future when you are subject to those things, you're able to stay in the lowest tiers because you're not going to be bumped up and paying more in Medicare, more in Social Security. So pay now while you don't have to worry about Medicare premiums. Pay now while you don't have to worry about Social Security tax is ultimately that idea. So being proactive, not reactive, because if we don't do anything, well, Bill and his wife there is what the story is going to be is we're going to have to pay more in taxes every year moving forward. And these are just at projected rates. These are at projected rates today. We don't know what tax rates are going to do moving forward. So I love this example. It just really shows the impacts of planning and making sure we have some flexibility and control throughout a retirement. So hopefully that was a helpful one, for one there for you. And so what we like to look at here as we look to wrap up here is, is this the real retirees tax bracket? You know, a lot of people think, well, I just have to pay. I just have to look at this chart. Wherever my income is, that's what I have to pay. Well, no, because this does not factor and show you those IRMA uh, premium increases that I've shown you earlier. So, you know, if we bump up to here on our, on our federal income tax rates, it doesn't show that we have to pay more in Medicare premiums. This doesn't show us where Social Security becomes taxable and where it's, it's tax-free. It doesn't show capital gains taxes. So what we really want to see is how does all this work together? And this is what we call the real retirees tax bracket. And this is just a glimpse at one of the softwares that we use with our client to really map out how does all this stuff play together? Because remember, we can't just use this one chart to decide what to do. We need to understand the impact of everything. And so you're gonna see this purple here, and that's where Social Security becomes taxed. And remember my little hand movements? If, you're so, if your income is here, then that means you're in this little gap here and that's where you're in the standard deduction 
where it's tax free, but also you're able to keep your social security tax free. That's where Jill was able to keep herself because anything she took out from a Roth didn't move her income over. But as soon as you use up this standard deduction, you start to force social security to become taxable and you start to force yourself into the federal income tax brackets that you see on this chart here. And so when you mix those two together, you could pay a significant amount in taxes, which is probably gonna be much more than if you were to just to pay those taxes today. And so what we can project is that, hey, maybe in the future, you could be paying nearly 30% tax by just taking out your R&D. If you have a million dollars in your tax deferred account, you take out your R&D, you may be forcing yourself into a 30% total tax situation because of those two things playing together. Well, if maybe we're able to do some Roth conversions now at either 12% or 22% or maybe even 24%, knowing that bracket is so high as you see here, 383,000 plus 30,000, that's almost $410,000 that we can con convert or if your income's 200, there's another 200 we can convert on top of that, pay it at 24% and that may be all in lower than what we're expecting in the future. And so those are the types of decisions and conversations you need to have with your advisor to making sure you're not missing anything. And if they have not been showing you reports like this, I would highly suggest you're getting second opinions to ensure you're not missing anything because this is something that you should be looking at every single year. And like I said, every year since 2017 is the idea. And so that's what we want to look at here. You're going to see that this gets pretty nasty in this area here. And that's because that's what we call the Social Security Tax Torpedo. In the Social Security Tax Torpedo, that's where you force not only federal tax practices to start to bump up to 22, but you force capital gains to be taxable, that's the red. And then you could force yourself to pay a 40 to 50% tax rate depending on your situation because you're forcing now Social Security to be fully taxable, 85% of that becoming taxable on top of your income. And now you're out of that 0% capital gains bracket, now you're in the 15%. So what we try to do with many of our clients is we either try to back them off of this, this torpedo eventually and keep their income here or less. And ideally, as we just showed with Jill, as we try to keep it in here. And so it's all gonna depend on your situation, right? Maybe you have a pension, it's not realistic to keep you in a zero. Okay, let's try to keep you off this torpedo and reduce these Medicare premium tiers ongoing that you see here. So as we increase our income past these tiers, that's when we're starting to have to pay more for Medicare. And that could be up to $1,000 per person for this per, for this year. And so you could be paying $2,000 more in Medicare premiums. If we hit this tier, even more. If we hit this tier, now we're paying almost $8,000, $7,500 a year extra in healthcare costs that we did not have to pay if we just did proper planning. And then the blue, brown there, some net investment income that got plugged into this situation. So again, I just want to emphasize the power of seeing how all this works together. And so if this is something you're interested in getting further help with, if this is a type of planning that you're looking for ongoing, go ahead and schedule a, a, a time for to talk with us here to see how we can help you further and see what your particular situation looks like to see if you truly need guidance on that moving forward. And so again, this is something I suggest everyone have. I hope that everyone is getting this done uh, to look really deep at what your situation looks like. And if you are a DIY, if you're doing it on your own, it's gonna be really hard for you to figure out all of these little calculations to decide exactly how much to Roth convert moving forward. And so that's where I would suggest you really get help um, because it's gonna be hard to see how all of these blend together with just simple calculations. You really need a software to plug it all together. So that's the idea there. And when planned smartly and planned the right way, I'll kind of show you what this could look like. And so we have a calculator that we go through uh, with many of our clients. And we're just gonna show you an example here today of $500,000. And so this was a client that we just ran this for who we looked to convert about $500,000. So they had over a million dollars. We're looking to convert about half of it. Now, you know, don't take this as advice. This was just for their situation, what we felt made sense for them. And so if we were able to convert $500,000, and we're expecting 5% growth rate, something conservative, which you know today's age, pretty reasonable. And then a 24% tax rate is what it would cost us approximately from a federal standpoint to convert this $500,000. Now again, we're not converting this in one year. We're really looking to do this for them. It was over about a three year period of time just to maximize that 24% bracket is ultimately the idea. And when doing this, we have to look at what would the cost be if we didn't do this? And so that's what we have in this chart here. So the current plan would be that we have to pay $200,000 total taxes paid on our RMDs moving forward. 
So every year we have to take out RMDs from this particular $500,000 4% starting at 73, and then every year moving forward, it starts to go up and up and up all the way to our 90. We have to take out about eight or 9% from what we've accumulated over those years. And so if it continues to grow, the withdrawal rate grows, we have to take out more and more every year, which means that we're probably gonna have to take out about $201,000, assuming they live till age 90. We're also going to have to pay taxes on any of that money. So if we choose to reinvest this $201,000 each year because we don't need the money maybe because we've done a great job of planning, well, in that case, you're going to have to pay capital gains tax on any of that money growing over time. And so if that's the case, we would approximate that to be about $53,000. Plus this RMD could force your capital gains out of that 0% bracket I've been talking about. Oh, and by the way, too, Social Security taxes, right? Now that we have to take this R&D, now we're forcing our Social Security to become more taxable and our lifetime tax bill for Social Security is gonna go up as well. And then the last thing is any taxes paid by beneficiaries, if we pass away at 90, they've gotta pay taxes on the rest of the money there that we have not taken out yet, which could approximate to about 192,000, just assuming that tax rates stay the same. Now, if tax rates go up, then this calculation could look worse, but you can see here that their lifetime tax go could be $527,000 that they're paying to the IRS. They only have 500,000 and they're paying over 527,000. That is a lot of money. And so what is a better option or what could help them reduce taxes is what we'll show here through tax planning. And so again, what if we converted this over a three year period of time? Well, they will have to pay taxes on the conversion, which is about 120,000 round number. And they will have to, uh, they will not have any tax on the growth obviously, cause it's all in a Roth moving forward. So unlike the taxes paid on the reinvestment, there's no tax moving forward. Once it's converted to the Roth, it can keep growing as long as possible. There's no RMDs on that money. And then also there's a Medicare premium increase that we do have to pay. We do have to pay for those increases for those three years, remember? And so with that being the case, it's gonna cost about $15,000. Now we all don't wanna pay $15,000, but you have to look and see, is this gonna make sense moving forward? And then understand that this money, there's no tax paid by the beneficiaries because it's all in a Roth now. So total cost to do this is gonna be about $135,000 round numbers. And so you have to ask yourself, is that what we wanna pay now or would we rather pay this over time? And so if we do this, for this person, it led to over $300,000 in tax savings over their lifetime. And over time, their net worth is gonna be higher. They're gonna be able to leave more money behind. They're gonna be able to spend more while they're living. They're gonna be able to give more if they wanna give more while they're living, volunteer if they wanna volunteer, travel if they wanna travel. It's gonna be a more peace of mind, more comfort throughout the retirement is obviously the goal. And so the question that I have for all of you is what could you do with an extra $100,000 in retirement just by being tax smart? You know, we always tell people, you may not need more money at this point. You may have saved enough, you may just need a better plan moving forward to make sure that you're not spending more or you're not making mistakes for what you've worked so hard for. And so again, we can run calculations for people that they don't need a 20% return anymore. They've saved enough. You may only need a 3% return to be successful. We just have to make sure we're not paying more in taxes than we should, making sure we protect our investments from any downfall in the market, make sure we have long-term care protection in place, which again, may not be long-term care insurance, but just different ways to plan for it is ultimately the idea there. So hopefully this calculator helps you give a, a piece of understanding of how beneficial tax planning can be for you. And uh, you know, we always think of this mountain as we wrap up here is, you've done great climbing the mountain, now let's make sure we get down this mountain successfully and plan for all these five pillars that we talked about earlier. So as we wrap up here, again, if you'd like to get some further guidance from us on this, then you can go ahead and schedule a call, have our team upload that calendar there and just pick a time there. You'll schedule a session with our team here. We'll go through an analysis with you. We'll get to know your situation. We'll see what your goals are, what questions you have, and we'll make sure that we can help you lead that situation, that, that session as, as good as possible. And if you are looking for further help, we can set up another session to really talk further about how we can help you, what our capabilities are, and go from there. And so um, if you'd like to do that, just go ahead and click on that link there. And then if you have questions, I know I'm not, I don't have enough time to get through all the questions here, um, but go ahead and schedule that time. We can discuss those questions on there. 
Uh, looks like we've got about a minute left, so I'll try to cover one or two short questions that I see here, and then uh, you know we'll go ahead and wrap up here. So um, one question is, is where can we get your book? So you can go to um, Amazon and buy it, but don't do that. Uh, go to our website. You'll see there you can request a copy, and uh, if you do that, then we'll be able to send that to you. So uh, again, just go to our website. Don't pay for it. We'll send it out to you if you're watching this webinar, and uh, you know we'll, we'll make sure you can read that. If you're looking for more help with tax planning, it does a really good job of making it simple and easy to understand, and so uh, it's a really good read to make sure that you're, you're getting things um, in the right place. So uh, another question here is, uh, the uh, RMDs from Roth. So no, there is no RMDs from Roth. So if you have the money in a Roth IRA, you don't have to worry about required minimum distributions on that moving forward is ultimately the idea. And that's one reason why people like the Roth conversions. They're like, hey, I don't need this money at 73. I don't want the government to force me to take it. I'd rather have it in a Roth where it continue to grow tax-free. And then when my kids get it, they don't have to pay taxes on it. And uh, you know they would they, after 10 years they don't have to take ta taxes when they take that money out they do have to take it out in 10 years though still um, but that's just a, a you know typically a smarter way to plan there so um, with that being said I'll go ahead and wrap up again if you're looking forward to uh, if you're looking to meet with us you know go ahead and schedule I'll have the team pop that up again I see that many of you have already scheduled and we know a lot of you are going to schedule that so we've had plenty of times available there with all of our advisors to make sure we can get your help there and I uh, look forward to seeing how we can help further hope you enjoyed the webinar and just making sure you pay the least amount of taxes and the least amount of Medicare premiums over your retirement so enjoy the rest of your day hopefully you enjoyed it